I'll talk you through what the interdependent fight means. What you see here is an enemy sniper on top of a grain silo. We have positively identified this target because an Air Force Predator has the target in his crosshairs. The pilot is actually flying the Predator from Konas. Imagery analysts also in the United States are using an Air Force data link. However, the video you just saw is from a U.S. Navy F-18 targeting pod. The Air Force Predator and U.S. Navy aircraft are connected to a U.S. Marine Corps forward air controller. The Predator is using laser to mark the target and the F-18 has captured the Predator laser spot. The Marine FAC has streaming video from both the F-18 and the Predator. The video is being sent to the command and control center so that a key decision can be made. Do we engage the sniper with a low collateral hellfire or do we destroy the fighting position? This information is being shared by cyberspace technology like the internet and instant messaging. These capabilities yield a spherical situational awareness. As you can see, the Marine commander has had enough of this particular fighting position and decides to use a larger weapon, a GBU-12, to destroy the building. All this information took less than two minutes. The key to this engagement is interdependency, the human component of leveraging each service's skill set to protect our ground forces. Our combat power comes from the collective might of the Air Force. We are fully connected, fully coordinated, and fully capable to deliver air power where and when the combatant commander needs it. All airmen are in the fight. As a combat infantryman, uh, you learn firsthand what uh, combat air power can do. We were truly a joint team that had lived together, worked together, fought together, uh, and the big thing is trained together. The one thing we never lost focus on was support to the land component. As you observe the uh, target here, there was a flight of two F-16s from the United States Air Force. They have now been told where the target is. They have identified it. The lead aircraft is going to engage it here momentarily with a 500-pound bomb on the target. We saw what the abilities were of our sister services right up front. Air superiority, uh, control of the battlefield. I had more close air support available than I had targets to put it on, which is a good thing when you're a soldier on the ground getting shot at. Roger, I have the target. Not one minute of one hour of one day could I not reach over to my ALO, our Air Force liaison officers, and have close air support. The mobility piece mm -hmm. of a SYNC's plan is the predicate to a success because you have to be able to move the forces before you can fight. The Army brings a lot to the fight, but we can't get to the fight without the Air Force. And it's just that, that joint team that really made this a, a success story. Airlift enabled the insertion of different forces. Leave it, Charlie. Along with the rapid advance came setting up of uh, dirt strips the taking over of Iraqi airfields so that we could airlift uh, support directly to the ground component. To be able to see things, you have to be able to fix targets. You have to be able to look at the defenses around the targets, and you have to be able to provide all of that to an air operations center to assess that information. The intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms that could map out where the forces were so that we could strike them in all weather. Air power was integrated with the ground war from the start. From strategic attack to interdiction to close air support, and I believe we did all of those in a very effective way. The more they understand about each other's service, equipment, leadership styles, the 
more effective they will become within their own service or in joint operations. Uh, here in Iraq, you're making jointness a reality. Not only do we have Air Force pilots providing close air support for the ground troops, as they have in previous wars, but with nowhere near the coordination and precision that we see today. Leadership is not bound by a branch of service. We had Air Force staff sergeants and uh, master sergeants living uh, with Army Infantry Battalion Task Forces in downtown Baghdad, uh, rolling out with them every day. All of our capabilities must be brought to bear to ensure victory. The interdependent fight must become our habit of thought. You've done your nation proud. Uh, you have filled a very important gap uh, in the security requirements here. You've uh, captured uh, a number of caches. You've captured a number of high value targets. Uh, so on behalf of all of my soldiers in the 2nd Brigade Combat Team, which you're part of, uh, we want to thank you. Our enemy knows they cannot defeat us in battle. They do believe, however, that they can wear down our will as a nation. They are wrong. This will not be easy. This will not be quick. And this will not be without sacrifice but we will persist and we will prevail. This uniform itself is, is representative of the interdependent fight. So when we mix with our U.S. Army counterparts, we, we dress uh, the same, we eat the same, and uh, they take care of us and we take care of them.